can we just talk about the fact I'm a big animal lover and like isn't there a scene where like the cat gets electrocuted by the yeah yeah I, I didn't like that that was it took it yeah. too far that took it a little too far <laughs> All right, and here we go. It is time for another episode of Cash's Top Five, and we've got a doozy today. We've got joining the show Leah Reich. How are you doing, Leah? Hello, Adam. Nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course, yes. Uh, Leah, if you, if you don't know, I'm, I'm sure if you're listening, you do know, uh, daughter of Frank and Linda Reich. Uh, Frank, of course, the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Go horse, go blue. Um, and Frank and Linda have created the Not Today, that's K-N-O-T, Not Today organization, the foundation that um, does some pretty incredible work here in Indianapolis and soon to be expanding to other areas. Leah, I will let you kind of talk about what Not Today does. Thanks, Thanks so much. So we're, we're really excited in, in 2019 when uh, the Reich family came back to Indianapolis um, we decided that it was kind of the appropriate time to start looking at how we can use this amazing, amazing NFL platform uh, to make a greater difference in the space of human trafficking, um, specifically uh, child sexual trafficking uh, and abuse. And so uh, the Not Today Foundation kind of got started in, the, in Indianapolis. Uh, we're working with um, a lot of the uh, law enforcement agencies and uh, DCS and the schools in Indy, um, really just focusing a lot on the prevention aspect. So how can we educate people in the community on this topic? It's dark, it's heavy. People don't really wanna go there a lot of the time, um, but it's a huge issue and it's rising. And we saw kind of this rise as we were in Philly, kind of on the East Coast, in San Diego with the Chargers on the West Coast. And then when we came to Indy, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's, it's not happening here. This isn't an issue here. And um, that's just not true. Unfortunately, this is a, a growing issue in the state of Indiana um, and it's something that we're, we're working hard uh, to address and protect as many children as we can uh, in the state, but really in the United States as a whole. Yeah, uh, like I said, it's a wonderful organization that you guys are shedding a light on. And I think part of the biggest issue or the biggest obstacle you're going to run into are people that don't want to believe that it's real or that it's true. Um, I will admit my ignorance. I didn't, you know, I heard of, you know, I've seen the movie taken back in 08. I've seen certain things and heard certain things, but it wasn't until 2012 when Indianapolis hosted their first Super Bowl. Mm. And obviously that being a huge event where traffickers will, will target the, the chaos um, and I, when I saw the numbers of what was going on, I was like, oh my God, I, I had no idea. So to spread the awareness, to increase the awareness and to put, um, you know, implement some of the changes and getting, you know, uh, policy changes uh, in place is, is pretty incredible uh, work for you guys to do. Yeah, well, thanks for letting us uh, talk a little bit about it. I know, like we said, it is a dark topic and a lot of people think of the movie Taken. They think, you know, it's people getting, you know, taken off the streets or out of their homes. And, you know, that does happen, but unfortunately it's much closer to home than that most of the times. It's, you know, parents who need money for an addiction or a habit. It's um, children who are in, you know, negative situations online. And that's becoming a huge issue right now is just, children being taken advantage of on basic social media platforms. Uh, and those are all things that we're just trying to shed a light on, help, uh, you know, especially parents who want to, um, who want to, who want to understand kind of what the landscape looks like. How do you protect your children? Um, and I think, you know, we, we've just been really overwhelmed by the support of the community in Indianapolis, you know, not just from a football perspective, which <laughs> has been wonderful. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're looking forward to bringing that Super Bowl trophy home one of these days. But uh, also just the, the community of Indy is something that, and I've lived in a lot of cities with, with the NFL and um, the community aspect of the Colts and the Indy community is just unmatched. And you can tell people in the state, they really want to do good. They really want to be involved. Um, and so we, we really look forward to all that we're gonna be able to do uh, in the state. I love it. Well, um, we've got a couple of things we want to do today, having you on the show. You know, we're talking about not today uh, organization. Also, 
um, you know, we were kind of talking about we wanted to do a top five, you know, it's kind of the, the motif of the show. And uh, we, we kind of wanted to keep it light. You know, we're going, we're heading into the holiday time. And, um, you know, I, I offered up some ideas like favorite candy bars or favorite rom-coms, you know, something kind of fun that, you know, we both could do. And it just made sense. You know, you guys have, um, you know, a big initiative coming up that we'll, we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but we're heading into the holidays. So top five Christmas movies Christmas. It is. <laughs> it is that time of year. It's cold. I have my, I have my uh, balsam fur candle going got, <laughs> in the holiday spirit. So ready, ready to, ready to drop some knowledge on you. I feel like our, our picks are going to be kind of different. What, what makes you say that? I'm going like, I'm going full class. I think, I feel like I'm going full classic. Okay. I'm not like pop. I'm not a pop pop culture guru by any means. So I'm going back all the way back to the basics. Okay, so that's fine. I, I, I'm okay with that. The you know the old black and white movies uh, have their place. I will say you and I agree already. Um, I do not have Die Hard on my list. I think okay. that argument is super dumb. Like yeah there's a christmas party and or that's what's going on in the plaza like it's not a christmas movie it's an action movie that just happens to have like iron man 3 there's like christmas it's at christmas time like it's not a christmas movie it's okay but fine all right you have christmas parties thanksgiving parties holiday parties all coming up if next party you go to just like throw it out there i guarantee 50 50 no i, I look i get it people are I, I People was, are all about they're, it. They're die hard about die it. Die hard, not a Christmas movie. Everyone who's listening. <laughs> okay, so we're ranking our top five favorite Christmas movies of all time. Let's go ahead and get it started. Leah, what do you got at number five? Number five is Charlie Brown Christmas, a 1965 classic. Yep. Um, this to me is like the most simple kickoff of the Christmas spirit that, that you can have. It is not overcomplicated. It's not overdone. Um, it brings in, and I know this is controversial, but it brings in a lot of the you know traditional like Christmas Christian elements um, that are important to me and my family around the holidays. And yeah. so I think that's just you really can't go wrong with that one. And it's short and sweet. You can get the, all the kids involved, and it's it's quick and easy. Yeah, it's definitely one of those. When I was a kid watching it it felt like a, it was a full length film. Yes. But, and now watching it as an adult, it's like, oh, it's like 20 minutes long or whatever. Yeah. It's like, it's over like that. Uh, but it's got so much nostalgia attached to it. And, and most of our picks, I'm sure are going to be this nostalgic picks, watching it as kids, growing up with the fam, watching it with the fam. Uh, but Charlie Brown is good just because there's so many iconic moments. There's the, the Christmas tree that he picks out. That's the real terrible one. And they make it look really nice. And, uh, when they're all well, actually, singing, we, are singing. you are you like a what is your Christmas tree situation like? Are you going to be are you a Charlie Brown Christmas tree situation or are you like going big Home Alone type Christmas uh, tree situation? That's a good question. So I am a single guy, and I don't have kids. So for me, you can see the white walls on my apartment here. I mean, I've got some some art kind of hidden behind me and a little light there. Uh, you you know, need me to blue. send you a wreath? Yes. Okay. You, you might need to send me a wreath okay. or a stocking or something. Um, All right. uh, but no, the tradition, um, it's my mom and my dad and my sister. It's the four of us. And so my mom has the fake tree with the multi multicolored lights. Oh, yeah. Um, and the old school de decorations, the ornaments, you know, our old high, you know, uh, elementary school pictures on the uh, on the ornament and and uh, the Charlie Brown figurines and stuff, that's that's what we do. I've always thought it was funny. I remember getting into an argument with an old coworker who thought if you didn't have white lights on your Christmas tree, like if you had multicolored bulbs, like you were white trash. And I was like, what? Where did that come from? Why are we even having this talk at work? First of all, um, but because we had multicolored lights and I was like, I know lots of people who do. Uh, it just it's funny, cool. it's funny that you that. say that though, because growing up, I don't know, like, so my, both my parents growing up, you know, they grew up in, in, you know, the suburbs in Pennsylvania, like very, you know, uh, you know, not overly like wealthy family and just like normal, you know, normal families. And, and so, yeah, we always grew up with like the traditional, like Christmas, like multicolored Christmas lights, like all the, <laughs> 
all the like random ornaments on the tree. So like from years past, all that. And that's like how we grew up. And now when I go, when I go to my parents' house for Christmas, it's like the tree with only white lights and like, you know, designer ornaments on it. I'm like, mom, what, like oh. where's my like third grade picture? Like, is that like, cause they have, yeah. you know, they have like the Colts like Christmas party over there and stuff. They're like, okay, we, we need to upgrade a little bit from the, from the homemade ornaments. If it looks like it came straight out of a catalog, I'm out. I want it to be a little home, homey, you know, homemade. Uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do, end up doing this year. We've never done the real tree. Did you guys ever do the actual real tree at any point? We always did a real tree growing up. But now, uh, now that I have my, like, have a kid myself and, like, my own home, I am, like, deathly afraid that my tree's going to catch on fire. <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah. That, like, that's a thing, right? <laughs> If you leave it up in like into January and it's super dry, I guess it's like a huge fire hazard. Yeah. Like uh, I, I trusted that my dad was going to keep the tree watered growing up. Like that was never a fear, but now when it's on me, it's all on me. You know, I, I don't trust myself. So, so we were <laughs> Oh, that's great. All right. So we got number Charlie five. Brown. What do we got? Charlie Brown at number five for you. For me, my number five is uh, maybe a controversial pick because it's going to be kind of, we might be separated by just a few years, maybe. So I feel like we may have had similar childhoods. Um, but not my number five is the Santa Claus. Oh, uh, you've got yeah. you've got Tim Allen, who my dad hates. It is what it is. So that made me. I, I thought he was great. Home Improvement. Loved growing up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Tim Allen crushed 1994. By the way, um, the Santa Claus came out. Home Improvement was the number one show on TV in his book. His biography was the number one book. Like he had the number one book, movie, and show in the world in Dare the same I ask, week. Though, where is he now? Tim Allen? Yeah. Oh, he's cashing Toy Story checks and Santa Claus 4 checks. Okay. He's, he's out in LA doing stand up. Oh, he's great. Okay. He's doing well. I'm, yeah. I'm, told, I'm here for the Santa Claus pick. That was. That was my sisters and I would, you know, that was when we always looked forward to, to watching, obviously, the classic, like, eating cookies, beard growing moment in the office is can't can't really beat that. Now, when you were a kid, did you think the mom was Sally Field, like the mom from Mrs. Doubtfire? I didn't even I don't even think I even thought about that. OK, because I did. And it wasn't until later that I was like, oh, that's just another actress with similar short bob black haircut. The style, you mean the 1994 Bob, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the 90s mom, like, I just assumed, like, looked just like Sally Field from Mrs. Doubtfire, so I thought that was her, but it turns out it wasn't, so. I'm That's just a little, thing. I'm a little crazy. Santa Claus at number five. Uh, so we had Charlie Brown Christmas was a very classic choice for number five. What do we got at number four? Number four, another classic, but throwing it back uh, even a little further to White Christmas. So okay. Bing Crosby, White Christmas to me, um, White Christmas to me means sitting on my grandparents' couch, like with all the grandparents, like trinkets all over the, the home and just like snuggled up in a blanket and like home. That's what White Christmas is to me. It's like black and white. It's like the classic music dancing combo that just like brings and like breathes like life into a movie in my opinion. And it's just like feel good holiday spirit. And when I met my husband, he this is like he didn't ever see this movie. Like, please tell me you've seen this movie. I have never seen White Christmas. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I think there's something about you have to see it when you're a kid, or you have to be yeah. introduced to it. Uh, if it's not in your family's repertoire, it's I doubt you're gonna add it in. I get um, that. Because there's a few of those older ones. Uh, there's a couple of them that I've now watched later after hearing about them my whole life. I finally watch them and I'm like, eh. And it's because I didn't grow up with it. I don't have that emotional connection to it. Yep. You know, there's something like if you're able to envision sitting on your grandpa's lap, you guys all have cocoa, you guys are doing the thing, it's Christmas, you know, it's warm, you know, um, there's just that vibe. There's just that atmosphere that you kind of can't recreate. And yeah. that's kind of where you're at now, where like for me, the holidays are like, oh, yeah, no, it's Christmas time. It'll be fun. Cool, whatever. You've got the little one. You've got yeah. the little girl running around. 
So you get to see it through her eyes. She's seeing Santa for the first time. She's seeing the presents on Christmas morning for the first time and going to be able to remember it probably this year for the first time. That's huge. I mean, and that, that white Christmas, you know, those classics, like is that 54, 55? Yeah. um, Having that nostalgia attached to it, I definitely understand for sure. Okay, so that's fair. Maybe put it on your list for this year, but for everyone watching, if you haven't seen it, especially if you have little ones, make that a Christmas memory because that's the only yeah. thing that's a good one. So what's your number four? <laughs> so my number four is not a classic either. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the, the early to mid 90s. I like it. Uh, my, t- my pick for number four is Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. Uh, okay. So let me, before you go on, let me say for some reason, and this is funny, this is both our number four. We were not a Home Alone family. Like my family, I think if you would ask my dad, he probably had, he would have never seen Home Alone. We did not watch Home Alone. I've never seen Home Alone. None of them. So (gasps) I know. (laughs) Wow. But again, that's, I feel like that's a family thing. Like, did you watch it as a family or, or, or not? Yeah. Um, my, I know my mom and dad were there, but it felt like it was so much my sister and I just running the show. Like we had the, it was VCR days. So her job was to hit the rewind. You know, we had the special rewinder machine and then we'd flip the tapes out and we'd watch Home Alone 2. And then we'd, you know, put the other one, then we'd put in Charlie Brown Christmas or whatever. Um, but also what made it, cause I had my partner in crime, my sister Melinda's a year and a half younger than I am. So you know, I would play Marv and she would play Harry and we like act out the scenes because she oh, had, so fun. you know, back when, you know, this is a, I don't want to get into a political discussion, but there were boy toys and there were girl toys back in the nineties. And, you know, she had like a little ironing set. And so we would play, you know, getting hit in the face with the iron. And I had a bag of play tools and the tools, would get, like we were so weird acting out, getting hurt. Like we were the, the wet bandits or the sticky bandits uh, that's that's so the nickname great. of the, the bad guys that try to rob Kevin. So what about Home Alone 2, though, makes it the choice? Here's why. It, here's what it is. We didn't have Home Alone on VHS. We had Home Alone 2, Lost in New York on VHS. So we watched Home Alone, like when it was just on TV randomly or at, or at a friend's house. And it, to me, seemed darker. Like huh. there was the creepy old man, the neighbor that was kind of scary. And then there was the, the furnace in the basement that scared Kevin. It just seemed kind of, I don't know, not scary, but it just seemed darker. But Home Alone 2 was just so dumb. Is that uh, the one where the mom, so the only thing I know about Home Alone is that the, like the, the, they leave him behind. Is that in the first one or the second one? Uh, well, both. Oh, okay, they are. Yeah. All right, but like the airplane, like they leave on the airplane. And like, That's Home like, Alone oh, 2. Over. Okay. Because they're Pretty they're going to they're going to New York. uh well no, they're going to oh. Florida. The family's spending, I don't know if it's Miami, but they're going to Florida. And uh they're like they're, they they want to go to uh a warm climate, the beach for the holidays. And Kevin, you know, Macaulay Culkin was like, Who wants to spend Christmas in a tropical climate anyway? Like that's not Christmas. Christmas is cold. We're in Chicago. And when they're running through the airport, the family, he gets kind of stuck behind with his bag fiddling with batteries. And he gets behind a guy he thinks is his dad because they have the same coat on and he gets onto the New York plane. They go onto the Florida plane Got and then it. they're checking okay. out. I'm sure you've seen the GIF or the, the video where Kevin, like the mom yells yeah, yeah. and, and faints. Uh, Catherine O'Hara, a gem, beautiful, wonderful actress. Uh, and then he goes wandering around New York and that's where they are at. And, uh, he befriends this old homeless lady and they have a real heart to heart watching the New York symphony orchestra from above. It's just really cool. It's just really fun. You've convinced me. It's on my, it's going to be on my list this year. I'll report back. I'll tweet I'm you and so, let you know. What I, I'm so, what I I'm so jealous that I have to watch white Christmas, but you get to watch home alone and home alone too, for the first time. I'm sure well, I'll no, like white I Christmas. I'm going to skip home alone one and just go right for two. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, there'll be stuff that, cause they rehash some jokes from the first one into the second okay. one, but you'll be fine. I like it. Okay. Right. See, this is good. We're giving people a lot of good options for the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. And 
ourselves too. Like I've got a to-do list, I'm sure, uh, with your your classic picks. Uh, Charlie Brown, White Christmas. What's number three? Jim Carrey in The Grinch is number three. Okay, let's talk about it. Like over the original cartoon. So, okay, original cartoon Grinch is my dad's ultimate favorite Christmas movie. That was like, that's what we grew up with. That was like his, if he was picking, like that's what we're watching. And then when we were, I, when, what year did that come out? Like 2000, 2000. We were probably, yeah, 2000, right. So we're like, that's the age when, you know, the Jim Carrey comes out and he's so funny. Like the makeup was so good. I, that my sisters and I just like went crazy. So like dad's pick got squashed and we, we upgraded to the Jim Carrey version. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. I could be wrong, but I would imagine Frank being surrounded by all the girls has had to take a backseat to what he prefers is you guys do what you want. You guys, you're, you're calling the shots. Yeah. Ultimate, (laughs) ultimate girl dad. We definitely, I mean, he, he, yeah, he, he wins a lot of battles, but he knows when to, when to let, when to let the the women win for sure. But actually I saw the original cartoon. Sorry. Do you like the original cartoon or you just prefer the, the Jim Carrey? Love it. I, I think it's just, what a, what a great story. What a great story. Cindy Lou Who and just the, the spirit of Christmas and everyone community. Like, isn't Christmas, like so much of Christmas to me is like community. And that's what, what that is. And like, yeah. again, like you said, not to get, to, not to get political and like not to get political here, but like, it's, I feel like it's a good look at just like being you know inclusive to the outcast right now and like especially during christmas time like how important is that like to make sure that everybody feels loved and everybody feels supported and taken care of and especially when we have so much like extending that love to other people like that's really what christmas a lot of what christmas is about agreed absolutely um My number three for you, I think you'll agree with because it was your number five, a Charlie Brown Christmas uh, is my number three. And I had to think about this one because that's one where if we had done this five, 10 years ago, you know, I'm in my twenties, I may not have appreciated it as much maybe. Um, But as the years go by and you kind of revisit certain things, it's one of the things I look forward to, um, each year you talk about community, you know, talk about family, um, you know, Charlie Brown, I know how much my mom loves Charlie Brown, like Charlie Brown, like that's, it's not officially Christmas until you watch a Charlie Brown Christmas. I didn't really, Charlie Brown Halloween was okay. Like yeah. I remember watching it a couple of times, you know, I got a rock, like there's some funny stuff from it. Charlie Brown Thanksgiving is terrible. I yeah. never got into it, but Charlie Brown Christmas you know, Linus delivering the sermon and the, like I said, the Christmas tree, Snoopy's great. The dancing for the, the play yeah. was just, ah, it's just so good. It's timeless. You know, like and you said, how about the jazz? Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know about your house, but like, I think we're always like the, the first Christmas song we play is going to be the Charlie Brown Christmas album. Just cause like the, that classic jazz what is it, the Vince um, Vince something trio? Goraldi, something like that. Yes, Vince Goraldi trio. Like that should that should just be the soundtrack of Christmas. Forget Mariah if, Carey. <laughs> yeah, uh, if we were ranking Christmas songs, that is definitely my number one by a mile. Yeah, like I, we don't even need to. Though. We don't even need to talk about two through five. Mariah Carey yeah. might make it, but Peanuts, oh, Charlie yeah. Brown. Um, I was wondering if we were going to have much crossover. We, we uh, had that one. Now I'm curious, you know, classics, we got two left. I've got a three. All right. So I'll give you a, so my next two are, are actually not classics. Well, I mean, I guess you can consider one of them classics, but I'll just, all right. So let me go to number two, because this, if this one's not a crossover, I'd be really surprised. Elf. Okay. Oh, okay. That's not the, that's not what I was expecting. I feel like Elf is, Elf is the one movie that, all right. So like if my husband is choosing and like, we're doing the family thing, it's Charlie Brown Christmas is the first movie, but for 
my family, it's Elf and the Grinch. Like those are our two Reich family movies that when we're all together for Christmas, you know, we're typically together for what is like three days for Christmas. One night is Elf, one night is the Grinch. And then one night is, and dad will probably like, not want people to know this, but Hallmark Christmas Channel, like whatever Hallmark Christmas movie you're on, that's, that's Christmas, simply Christmas. Oh yeah. I was actually wondering if one of those would have made your list. Like uh, there were some classic ones. I always make fun of my mom and my, my sister and aunts that really get into it. Uh, the Christmas list with Mimi Rogers is one the Christmas shoes with Rob Lowe. Uh, Christmas not, then, Grinch, the Christmas switch it, the <laughs> options are endless and they're all yeah. so good I love them all but it's yeah I think those are just like turn them on like feel the spirit but don't really watch you know yeah no absolutely um all right Charlie Brown White Christmas Grinch Elf a little bit of crossover there my number two for you uh, is one that would not be a family-friendly choice if we're being honest. Okay. Uh, it's not as bad as Bad Santa, but it's kind of up there. Uh, but my number two is, I can't help it, it's Christmas Vacation. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, I'm not a Chevy Chase guy, but that's him at his best. Uh, Cousin Eddie is, is classic. Um, you've got Juliette Lewis and Johnny Galecki as the kids, you know, that's kind of before they both kind of blew up. It's like, oh, you know, that's, you know, the guy from Big Bang and that's her from the movie career, you know. Uh, so much great lines, a lot of it kind of adults, uh, but he just, it's unbeatable to me. Uh, when you talk about quotables, when you talk about, uh, again, one that my dad doesn't necessarily care for because it's one that we have to watch all the time every year. Um, it's, it's good, man. I can't help it. I hear you. And this is to me, this is similar to home alone. Like, I know that people like laugh about the fact that, you know, like my family, like in the public eye, like my dad doesn't curse. Like we don't have like bad humor. Like that's not like just for like the world. That's actually how our family like really is. And so sure. like that movie was never, it was never like one that we were allowed to watch. Yeah. Um, so I, I did watch it as an adult, of course, because you know, every single person ever thinks it's amazing. And, and it just didn't connect with me because I didn't have the memories. That, and that's, that is the case. I want to say, I definitely watched it too young. I didn't watch it as like a little kid. But I want to say it was probably middle school the first time I watched it. And I remember thinking like, oh, <laughs> this is. Also, can we just talk about the fact I'm a big animal lover. And like, isn't there a scene where like the cat gets electrocuted by the. Yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. that was, it took it yeah. too far. It took, it took it a little too far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely understand. And the, the, the dog gets into the trash and kind of like yaks yeah. up a bone. Like it's look this is definitely a guy pick you know like i'm sure there are plenty of women who love christmas vacation i'm sure there are dudes who don't but based on kind of what the table we've set so far with our backgrounds and, and what we're into like i could definitely see you know like it's not a show for the cameras like you and frank and the family like it's a lot of stinking and, and dad gummit and this and like yeah that's a lot of what I grew up with too. But, and honestly, now that I think about it, I usually watched it on TV. So they would have edited, edited yeah. a lot because it's like the TBS version or whatever. It wasn't well, until now, we got though, the we have DVD. access to like, we have, like, we don't, that's the thing. We don't watch TV movies anymore, right? So it's like everything is just raw. Yeah, it's not unedited. Like it's streaming now. And I remember we got the DVD for it 10 years ago. And you hear the actual, like when he's losing his mind there at the end, the whole diatribe, and you're like, yeah. mm, all right, it's a little weird that I watched this with my grandma when I was growing up, but that's okay, I guess. But it is funny. You're right. It is, it, 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 there are parts of it that are very comical. It's very Christmassy. And also I feel like relatable for a lot of people who are just like with family at Christmas. And it's, that's, that's how it is. Everybody's got to just buckle up in the spirit of Christmas. True. Also, I can't, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention my huge crush growing up on Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Elaine from Seinfeld, Wait, mm, plays the yeah. villain neighbor next door. 
huge fan. She makes a lot of, she, they've got some really good lines in there too. Um, so yeah, Christmas Vacation, my number Love two. It. All right, Charlie Brown Christmas, White Christmas, Grinch, the Jim Carrey version, Elf. We've kind of bounced around a little bit. Yeah. What's number one? Number one for me, I'm going like, this is probably like the your Christmas vacation pick. The holiday. It's my favorite, favorite, oh. favorite Christmas movie. Jack Black? What? Jack Black, the holiday? Jack Black. Jack Black, um, uh, uh, Kate Winslet, um, Cameron Diaz, uh, Jude Law. So yeah. this movie to me is like, everything you want in a Christmas movie, love, friendship, like children, travel, like it has everything. It's heartwarming. It's for everybody. Like even, I just feel like even, I remember the first time me and my husband watch it, like he was like, oh yeah, okay, I get it. It's a good, good, <laughs> good movie. Um, so I don't know. I feel like that's one that me, like diddle, I don't know if a lot of people watch it, do they? But if you haven't watched it, run to it and watch that no that is a great pick um honestly i want to say that was one that i watched when it came out with a girlfriend and i was at the age where i was like oh, this is so stupid i don't want this is a girl movie and like i didn't give it the respect it deserved so i really need to revisit it also cannot believe that it's a wonderful life I know. Didn't make your top five. And we can kind of talk about that because I have a controversial opinion that uh, I don't think It's a Wonderful Life is a Christmas movie. So yeah, I, I would agree. And that's why I did not put it on my list. You agree with that? Nobody I, ever agrees with me on that. I never got it. I like, I, I just, it never connected with me. But wait, hold on. Wait before we go there. Since that's not your top, then that's not your top. I have to know your top first. Okay. So Santa Claus, Home Alone 2, Charlie Brown Christmas, Christmas Vacation. My number one for you, I didn't really want to spoil it earlier, but it's for sure Elf. 2003, oh, yes. Will Ferrell, Zoe Deschanel in that voice, Faz in Love as the manager. Uh, you've got two powerhouses with James Conn and Mary Steenburgen. I mean, it's just so good. And if we were going to do a top five of unrecastable roles, like picture anybody but Johnny Depp being Captain Jack, right? Picture yeah. anybody being Elf besides Will Ferrell, even like a Jim Carrey, I don't no. think can pull it off because there's such an innocence and such a warmth and childish, impish fun to his ignorance as an Elf. And he's just so funny. Will Ferrell can make you laugh with just a sound or with just a look. And one of my favorite directors of all time, John Favreau, who's done lots of different things. Um, that was his first like, real big blockbuster type movie that kind of broke him. He did a lot of indie oh, wow. stuff in the late nineties and he's gone on to do like Iron Man and he did chef and um, jungle book and a lot of wow. stuff. But anyway, um, elf reigns supreme. It came out I'm in so 03. Glad. When I said it, your face was like disappointment. I had to hide it. I had to, I had to deflect a little bit. Okay. I have some good elf elf fun facts then since since now that I, I, I like I held them back during mine because I thought you were disappointed but now I'm gonna go for it okay so fun, <laughs> okay. fun facts about Elf um the scene when he's going through the Lincoln Tunnel you know that that actually caused a bunch of accidents in the Lincoln Tunnel because they were they were shooting it like well with actual traffic in the Lincoln Tunnel and people were so shocked at like seeing this that there was accidents during that scene when they were shooting that scene really yep Wow. So that kind of actually, fun fact for you, uh, John Favreau, the director, um, one of, a couple of his indie movies from the late 90s uh, was Made and Swingers. It was him and Vince Vaughn, and they, it was, they kind of wrote it and started it themselves. And he was famous for going and filming where he didn't have permits because it was like too difficult and too expensive. So it was like guerrilla tactics. So like they had a, a big casino scene. And I think made and so they just went and filmed in areas like hey everybody we're going to be filming so if you don't want to be in a movie like get out of the shot and people were like we don't care we're in vegas or atlantic city or wherever they were they're in a big casino yeah. and then they would just film and then duck out 
That's so, so it sounds like he took that to help. He did. He, he must have taken that because I also read, this was like a while ago, and I'm probably not getting it exactly right, but like while they were shooting, like a lot of the extras, Will Ferrell would just like run up to people on the street in New York and be like, hey, we need extras. Like, can you like be in, like, be in this shot for us? And the people would do it. I would do it if I was, if that was me. Be like, of course. Will Ferrell. Yeah. I mean, he was coming off of SNL. Like he had just yeah. left the year before. So that was you didn't get bigger than in New York than Will Ferrell in 0203. I mean, that would have been huge. And do you know that he did get, they did ask him to do a sequel that he turned down. I just recently read that. Like he turned down crazy money, which. Yeah. Like $30 I, million, dollars, I think. Which I kind of wonder if that is true. Like I get that he turned it down, but I'm like, dude, you made Anchorman too which was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. So maybe because there's like, it's like a family, it, there's like nostalgia. It kind of ruined the classic element of it. Like now it's yeah. immortalized, right? If there would have been a second, it might not have had the same effect. I agree. Although, yeah, no, I think I agree because I don't feel like the, the sequels cheapened the Santa Claus too bad or like Home Alone, there's like four or five of them. That's true. But I like the idea of it being a standalone, like it exists. It's not a franchise. You know, it, it gets to just be its thing, you know, like I kind of like that. Yeah. Uh, I think that's... that one of my favorite, li- like favorite movie lines is, bye buddy, hope you find your dad. Like, I just feel <laughs> like that, like that to me, that line, like we say that in my family all the time, like as a joke, like whenever we're like leaving the house, like that's how much we love this movie so yeah well it came out so it was 03 so I was a freshman in high school so you were in what like middle school yeah I was like in eighth grade yeah like middle school okay yeah so we quoted it all the time I mean it was you sit on a throne of lies you smell (laughs) like beef and cheese I mean cotton-headed nitty muggins like it was it was just the lexicon. It was like Seinfeld where you just, it was a part of our vernacular at that point. You don't even yeah. necessarily remember where it came from, but yeah. Elf That's my number one, one that we need to commit to our generation needs to commit to passing down as a, just like a legend, like a, a movie of legends. So nobody forgets. Agreed. We should, we should organize like a huge public showing like, <sighs> Everybody come down. We're going to have hot cocoa and marshmallows and whatever. And we're just going to blast maple off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> maple syrup on uh, spaghetti. On like spaghetti. Yeah. We'll really do it up the right way. I feel good about our picks. I feel like we, we stayed kind of in a good lane. I think most people would agree. There are some, I think there were some definite ones that are out there that we left off the list and for good, for good reason. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful life. Miracle on 34th street. Like, could have been in there, but. Yeah, uh, those were kind of, to me, they're like the boring old classics. But again, I still, I maintain It's a Wonderful Life. You go the whole movie and it's not till the very end when they're talking about there's snow and then there's the tree up. I'm like, it's not a Christmas movie. They haven't talked about Christmas. It's not a part of the vibe, like at all until they do like kind of a rip off of Scrooge. You know, he sees what life would be like without him or whatever, but. Um, well, speaking of Scrooge, the other two that I thought I made my opinion on your list were um, Christmas Story. Just didn't make it. It's probably yeah. number six. Okay. Yeah, um, just barely. And A Christmas Carol. I saw a great remake of The Christmas Carol on Netflix last year, and I can't remember what it's called, but everyone should look that up because I remember watching and thinking, oh, this is a really fresh take on A Christmas Carol. It wasn't the Jim Carrey CGI one, right? No. Oh, man, Jingle All the Way. Yeah, Jingle All the Way. Classic. That was a good one. Yeah, dang. Scrooge with Bill Murray Yeah, is, is pretty decent. Polar Express. Polar uh, Express is a weird movie to me. I'm fine with it, but it wouldn't even make my top ten. <laughs> what about Nightmare Before Christmas? Jack Skellington. That's another one. Never seen. Yeah, it's got... I get that it's Christmas, but it, to me, it's Tim Burton in black and white and dark. Like it's a hollow, it's kind of Halloween. That's scary. Um, Here's what everyone yeah. needs to do. Like I love our list. I feel good about it. We made good choices. 
However, if you want to have a really nice Christmas, just buy yourself some YouTube TV so you can get the Hallmark channel and just hit play starting on December 1st and you'll be good. Yeah, you get to see the the big town, the big city banker go home and, and fall in love with the small town baker. And uh, they save Christmas and they raise the money for grandpa. He's able to, you know, get the new truck and all that sugary Christmassy goodness. <laughs> and turn it into a great game if you feel ever so inclined. Yeah, anytime you can do that to make that a little more palatable, uh, I'm definitely game. Uh, well, thank you uh, for doing this. This was a lot of fun. I really am going to watch White Christmas and I'm going to report back. Um, I really am going to watch Home Alone. <clears throat> If you want to skip the first one, go ahead. Okay. But I highly recommend doing a double feature, one and two. Actually, okay. if you do that, I'll do White Christmas and I'll rewatch The Holiday. Oh, okay. Because honestly, I don't remember. Uh, I remember it vaguely. But you have to do White Christmas on a night you can commit, remember, because it's super long. How long is a White Christmas? I thought it was like two. I think it's like two and a half hours. Oh, okay. All right, I I'll still do it. I'll do it. Yes. Fast forward. All right, fast forward through the first half. Hit the second <laughs> half. That's really where the Christmas comes in. Nope, nope. I'm going to do it the right way. I'm okay. going to, I'm going to be in Christmas mode. I'm going to get my Santa hat on. I'm going to get some hot cocoa in my mug. I'm going to be watching White Christmas. I'm going to be getting I'll... some hot cocoa right after this conversation because that sounds ideal right now. Nice. And also, fun fact. Okay, so let's be honest. Like, I am secondary choice. It's during the season, so you know, Adam, you're great. Love you, but I know you want. But like, having Frank would be the key, would be the star of this podcast. <laughs> so, as I'm his fill-in replacement, I can share one fun fact about my dad. And if hopefully Colts fans like want, you know, as we as Colts start, you know, taking off for the rest of the season, have you ever see my dad at Starbucks because he's there every day. Buy him a hot chocolate. He only drinks hot chocolate, doesn't drink coffee, nothing else. Hot chocolate every single morning. That is the key to the cult success. That's making sure that he has hot chocolate every day. Wow. Uh, an insider tip. I had no idea he's, he's hot chocolate. Is that year round? Oh, year round. Every day. Wow. That is fascinating. And I think you're selling yourself short, being honest. Like, his, I, if I were to imagine having Frank on the show, I've only seen him in pressers talking to reporters. So I don't really need, uh, yeah, my top five is, uh, you know, is probably Elf. Uh, my number four is probably, uh, yeah, no, we're, we tried real hard. And I think it's going to be uh, Miracle on 34th Street. Like, give me more, Frank. So, no, it's wonderful having you on. Give, give, give him a break. You know, we you got, there, there's a lot of, there's a lot that goes into that. So, no, I know. but thank you. Uh, well, speaking of Frank, uh, Homeboy's got a big birthday coming up. Um, we're going to probably release this birthday weekend, uh, December 4th. Frank turns 60, the big 60, big milestone birthday. And uh, we talked a little bit about uh, when we kicked off the episode, the Not Today organization, um, working in, you know, shining a light on it and preventing, you know, child sexual exploitation and, and trafficking. Um, specifically, you guys have a pretty big initiative, you know, in conjunction with Frank's 60th birthday, what is going on this month of December? So, you know, one thing about my dad is he is not a gifts person. He's never, we can never buy him the right thing. We can never, you know, do the right thing. He doesn't, he doesn't want that. So we, you know, we talked about how we can make this birthday because it is a milestone birthday, 60, like to me, like that's, You've done a lot in 60 years and a lot of really amazing things in football, not in football as a husband, as a dad. Um, and we wanted to really find something that we could do to honor those 60 years. And so our focus for this birthday is um, the Not Today Foundation is going to set out to raise $60,000 for his 60th birthday that we are going to specifically dedicate to education programs um, for this issue. So specifically, how do we get um, better information and better training in front of healthcare workers, educators, parents, and children um, on everything from body safety and internet safety and consent um, to how to identify and report, you know, sexual abuse and exploitation. And um, if you've read any of anything about my dad's past, his, both of his parents are teachers and coaches. Uh, my grandma was a field hockey coach. My grandfather was a football coach. 
Um, and his brother is a head football coach at a, at a university. And so this is one thing that my dad is extremely passionate about is education. And so we thought this was very, very fitting to, to make this birthday, um, A, going to something that will truly impact the lives of children, um, but also doing that in a way that we can honor kind of his past and his legacy and his passion with education. So we, we really hope that um, if you can donate, what we're asking people to do is donate $6. If you have the ability to do it, that's all we're asking. If we can get people to donate $6, um, that would be and go such a long way um, for Not Today and our, and our initiatives. Um, and if you can't do that, we just ask, can you just share our posts on social media? I think that's what we're gonna be putting out on our Not Today Foundation Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, lots of fun football content out there. So just share it and say happy birthday. Like we're going to be looking at these posts. We're going to be reading them. Say happy birthday on our fundraiser page. Um, this is what this is all about. It's all about activating our football community. Uh, we talked about community earlier in the show and football to us and our family is family. Football is family. This community is family. And so we just appreciate um, everyone kind of rallying around this cause for his birthday. Uh, that is incredibly special. So on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's not today. That's K-N-O-T, like a sailor's knot, not today. And it, that's the, the tag, the, the ID for not all Not today, of just as you said it, um, F-D-N. So not today foundation, not today F-D-N um, on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. That is amazing. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to help spread the word. Uh, I think it's incredible when you look at the circumstances that brought, you know, Frank and your, the Reich family to Indianapolis, kind of like a, you know, last minute unexpected, he was still in Philly and it was the whole, you know, we don't have to get into the details, but I just think of how fortunate the, the community is to have wound up with you guys doing this incredible work in our community. You know, you talked about how Indy, you know, you've lived a lot of places Indy has really opened the doors and, and embraced you guys as a family. And I, that makes me feel really good because I have had the opposite uh, life where I've lived in Indy my whole life, you know, spent a year in Florida, but it's pretty much been the East side. It's been Indianapolis. Um, so to hear that from you guys makes me feel really great and proud of where I come from and to know, I want you guys to know, especially just how loved you guys are. I mean, just, the work you're doing with this foundation, um, you know, the idiots on Twitter can complain about whatever they want on game day. Uh, but at the end of the day, he's not just a coach, you know, you guys are a family and you're doing wonderful things with the Not Today organization. So we want to help spread the word. Absolutely. Yeah. You're going to make me like, make me tear up. That's, it's really special. And that's what, that's what, like we said, when we talk about the NFL community, it's what makes the NFL community so special is you have fans that are so passionate <laughs> that, you know, they're going to say and, and do anything for the love of their team. And fortunately, we get to work for a team like the Indianapolis Colts that has that passionate community because we've been with teams where the communities haven't been as passionate. These are some passionate fans and that's what drives the team on Sunday. It's amazing. And not only that, but the Not Today Foundation is one aspect of that. I mean, you think about the, how the Ursay family has enabled you know, their foundation and the, you know, kicking the stigma and AO1 with Carson's foundation and Darius's foundation and big brother, big sister. This is a culture change in the city. We're not just talking about football, like football is the platform and we're going to do whatever it takes to win, but it's really about how do you leave a, a legacy and a culture change in the city. And that's what we're here to do. So thanks for letting us use your platform and your skills on, on air as a radio host and teacher to, mm -hmm. <laughs> to bring that to, to, to bring that yeah to bring that to more people so we we really yeah i can't thank you enough for that i love it leah thank you so much for taking the time to do this we got a a fun ranking our top five christmas movies you and i both have homework now for the holidays uh, all my love to your family and uh, yeah we'll talk to you soon okay happy holidays and go colts <laughs>